Hi, it's so great to be here with you. I actually was really hoping to travel to South Africa this year. And so I'm just pretending that I did and I'm here with all of you, even though I'm in my basement and I don't know if you can see. Yeah, that's my very dramatic dog, uh, Vila, who thought that when I got up early and got dressed this morning, we were going for a walk or something really exciting. And then I just came downstairs. So she's super bummed out about that. But um, so Haley and I both work for um, on the design team at Dropbox and I am um, an editorial director in the brand studio. So I'm a writer um, and I've spent a lot of my career helping brands find their voices. But over the past couple of years, I've really had a lot of um, kind of personal awakenings about my personal voice and have taken a lot of the things I've learned over the years about brand voices and kind of transmuted them to help people find their personal voice. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing together tonight. And I, it said it on the opening slide, but make sure you have something to write with, take notes with, um, so that we can, because we're going to do a lot of brain stuff, but also fun stuff. And also I'm running two computers, so I Sorry, if I look off to the side for a minute, I'm figuring out my buttons. So here's what we're doing tonight. We're gonna tackle these questions. Who are you really? What do you care about? What are you afraid of? And where do you go from here? It's ambitious, but we're gonna do it. Um, we're also gonna do some fun and really creative things. Um, but this is a personal topic, so things might get a little bit real. We're all going to be slicing ourselves open a bit to get at what's really going on inside of us. So you might feel a, a bit vulnerable at times. Um, that's okay. This is a safe space and um, as much as we can make it so on Zoom. And I'm going to be vulnerable too. And um, so we'll all get messy together. So if you are in your pajama pants, it's absolutely appropriate. Um, and also just a note about the photo, you're gonna see a whole bunch of fruit. There's kind of this fruit theme happening with this um, workshop because I, I find fruit to be a really amazing metaphor for our voices. Because if you think about it, when you see an unfamiliar fruit, perhaps like the first time I ever saw a dragon fruit, um, I was like, wow, what a crazy looking, outrageous, amazing fruit. And then we sliced it open and it was such a peaceful, like white, inside with the tiny black seeds and that was not at all what I was expecting and I think a lot of times our our true voices are the same way you know what we've got inside of us might surprise people it might be different and not at all what um, even we are expecting to find sometimes so that's what's up with the fruit so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this is me and my chicken when I was two years old and when I was really small my mom would tell all her friends that I was a strong-willed child and she was not proud about that. She wasn't saying that as a compliment. Then when I was 15, the principal of my high school called me a witch. Um, apparently I had the makings of a rebel, as you can totally tell from this picture. Um, and then not so long ago at work, I was voted most likely to say fuck in front of an executive and I did. So based on that very short resume, you might think that um, I'm quite comfortable speaking my mind, right? I'm a rebel, I have a potty mouth, strong-willed child, but, um, but that's actually not the case because as for many of us, in spite of all my strength and skill and experience, I often find myself, sometimes without even realizing it, waiting for someone in a position of power to give me permission to speak. And for me, the silencing of my voice pretty much began from the time I was born. This is a road in front of my parents' home in the middle of um, the United States. So I grew up in a small farming town where everybody there voted very conservatively, ate a lot of sweet corn, and everyone goes to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. So church, as I grew up, had a lot to say about what I could and couldn't say, what I could do, what I could wear, and what I could think. It was really a fundamentalist religious world. And in that world, women were submissive and silent. So at church, you could play the piano if you're a woman, but you can't stand in the pulpit and teach. 
So we were taught to be keepers at home, subservient to our husbands, and women were quite literally not allowed to wear the pants. These are my parents, Dave and Sue, and as you can tell, they're pretty adorable. Um, they were great parents. I had a great childhood. They loved me really well, but they were part of this community. And so my dad made it very clear to me that as my father, it was his job to protect me and watch over me until I grew up. And then I would get married and he would hand that job directly over to my husband who would be in charge of protecting me and watching over me. He wanted to make sure I had a good life. And I knew that, but in his worldview, the man was the head of the household. And so I learned my place. And that lesson was reinforced at home, at school, at church, and literally everywhere I went as I was growing up. So for years and years as a writer, poetry has really been an important way for me to make sense of the world. And I've been writing a lot lately about all of this and about my upbringing. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to share one short piece with you just to illustrate how deeply that instruction of silence and submission can really sink into your bones. And while I do this, I'm gonna make you look at um, this awkward photo of myself at age 15. Because I, this poem is called Upon Being Called a Witch at age 15, and obviously you can see what a deviant I was at that time. And also just stellar fashion sense going on there. So this is the poem. When I tell the story, it sounds like a joke. Are you a witch? Classmates twittered as he jabbed a bratwurst finger and I burned red from the tits up. I said, are you a witch? Whatever I'd have said wouldn't have mattered. Minds were made up before John was a Baptist. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I was such a good girl, long skirts, locked knees, but a treachery of questions and weaker sexes than mine have burned for less. First Samuel 15, 23. That day wasn't the one that broke me, but it left a crack. That's how the magic gets in. I sense a spirit of rebellion in you. Patriarchs demand submission. If you cannot bend, you must break or be gone. I left slowly, heart first. Years later, my feet caught up. Your story obviously is different than mine, um, but maybe you recognize some of these feelings that I'm talking about because many of us especially women, but really anyone who's ever been marginalized, anyone who doesn't look or sound or act like the people in power, we have been trained from a really young age to silence and submission. No matter where you grew up or what your religion or lack thereof might be, no matter how free-spirited or repressed your childhood was, you have been told over and over again what is the acceptable standard of existing in society. So you might think like I did that you, you've grown out of this, you've rebelled against that old way of thinking and being only to discover that you're still subconsciously following all of those rules. We all have been so conditioned to ask for permission to use our own voice that after a while we internalize the idea that we don't have the right to share our story, that nobody wants to hear what we have to say. So we silence ourselves but we don't have to do that. We can refuse to go quietly. Many of us have been silencing ourselves or censoring ourselves or changing our tone or only telling a polite version of our story, tiptoeing around the truth of who we really are and what we really wanna say. But I want you to hear tonight that you have more power than you know and you can refuse to go quietly. Your voice, is your power and there's nobody else here in this workshop or here in South Africa or in the whole world actually who can say the things that you have to say and someone out there needs to hear it. I can guarantee that. So that's what we're talking about tonight. We're going to talk about how to unleash the power of your voice and finding your voice or taking back your voice is going to require some serious introspection that will probably last beyond tonight. And I'm gonna tell you in a little bit um, some tools that we're gonna give you to do that. But first of all, you have to be willing to crack yourself open and peel back those protective layers and see what is inside. 
And like I said earlier, you might be surprised by what you find. So we are going to start slicing. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the exercise that you all were sent on um, email, like the pre-work exercise. And that is all about who am I really? So that's the first step in identifying your authentic voice. So um, this can get really tricky, right? Because we're all our own harshest critic. We don't always see ourselves as we really are. And so we've all been taught to hide certain things about ourselves. Um, Haley, do you have a trick? Where did you say my cursor was? Because I just keep having this. Can you not, can you not see your cursor? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so when you go to share yeah. screen, then it's on, um, let's see, it's on your, are you sharing on the app or the, the desktop? The desktop. Okay. Um, you can also try to, it should ask you if you want to follow your cursor. Um, all right. Well, maybe we'll try to work on that while everyone's okay. in their first breakout session. Yeah. But you I'll can send it to me. Keep yeah. plugging through here. I wanted to talk to you for a minute about um, this guy, Casey Gerald, and he wrote this memoir a couple years ago. There will be no miracles here. It's a really wonderful book um, about his life so far. He's not that old, but he's had a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, but I love what he says about repression, that it's a bitter pill that's offered to us all because we're taught to hide so many parts of who we are and what we've been through, our love, our pain, and for some of us, our faith. So while coming out to the world can be hard, coming in to the raw, strange magic of ourselves can actually be much harder. And also, this is not just about repression, but about evolution, because your voice isn't fixed. It's fluid. It changes. So maybe you've been telling yourself and others the same story for a long time, but now you're a different person than you were five or 10 years ago. There are more chapters in your story, and so it's time to evolve. And I always love to think of Beyonce when I talk about this evolution, because she evolved from Bootylicious to formation, right? So it's only natural that all of us, as we grow and as we change and as the world around us changes, that we revisit the question of who we are from time to time and reinvestigate to see how life has changed us and how that affects our voice. So that pre-work that you were given to do to imagine yourself as a fruit, I know it's kind of weird, but it was weird on purpose. Um, in the in-person version of this workshop, we do this collage and we have a big table full of really fun materials for you to play with. And obviously we can't do that now. So we're kind of improvising and trying to find a way for you to step outside of yourself and look at yourself differently in the hopes that maybe you can realize something new about yourself. So you receive this in an email, imagine yourself as a fruit and draw or describe yourself that way. And the fruit could be real or imaginary or a hybrid of some sort. Um, if you didn't get the email or you didn't do the exercise, don't worry, you can still think about this question of what kind of fruit you might be for a few minutes before you have to do anything about it. Um, and also I want you to know that this exercise and actually everything that we're gonna do tonight is um, available in a workbook. And it's a really pretty workbook. It's a kit actually with the book inside and a poster and stickers and all sorts of great stuff. And we um, have mailed a giant box of them to Inez and she's going to make sure that each of you get your own copy. So um, given the, the nature of the 90 minutes, we're trying to pack a bunch of stuff in here and it's gonna come at you fast and furious. But when you get the workbook, it's all there and you can take your time with it and um, revisit it if that's something you'd like to do. All right, so the point of this exercise, again, is to get you thinking about your whole self within and without. This is my version of myself as a fruit, a dark plum with a fiery heart, just leaking feelings all over the place because I don't know if you have done your Enneagram, but I'm an Enneagram four, the in individualist, so I'm all about feelings, so. That's why mine is kind of messy over there. Um, so here's what we're going to do next. 
we are going to split up into breakout rooms for about 20 minutes because I want you each to get a turn to share a bit about your fruit self. And um, if you are not the one speaking, you also have an incredibly important job because you are the listener and I, I need you to be an active listener. And here's what I mean by that. So I want everyone to take a screenshot, if you can, of this slide and then keep it up on your computer when you're in the breakout room. Um, and as you're listening for every person who's sharing about their self-portrait, I want you to write down just three words that jump out at you most when you hear that person speak. So for every person who speaks, you're gonna have three words. And this is gonna help the storyteller hear how their voice sounds to others. So you can look at this list of words um, and pull some out of there. Or if you think of something that's not on this list, please feel free. This is just kind of to get you started. Um, so if the list of words you're going to get back from your listeners as the storyteller is a gift of insight from someone else, someone who is listening really hard and looking for the real you to shine through. And it might be not just the words that you're saying, but how you're saying it, how you created your fruit, um, just a feeling that, that people are getting from you, okay? So here's how the breakout rooms are gonna work. One person will volunteer to go first, so that's the first storyteller, and they'll just take a minute or two to describe their fruit self. The rest of you will listen, write down your three words. Then when the storyteller is done, just quickly go around and all the listeners just tell that storyteller these are the three words i thought of when i was listening to you um, and as you receive those words as a storyteller write them down so you don't forget them you can look at them again later and um, so you do that until every person in your group has had a turn to tell their story and we can pop in and help if you need help so don't be afraid to afraid to get in the chat and be like we need some help um, so the next thing we're going to do is talk about what you care about because this is getting to your values, right? And your values have a lot to do with your voice and what your voice is, how you express yourself, what you wanna talk about. Um, because really a voice is more than just words. And Haley, you can advance. Your voice is an expression of your character, your values and your personality. It's really everything about how you present yourself to the world. So it's what you wear, it's your art, it's what you post on social media, it's what you choose to stand up for. And for most of us, we really carefully curate all of that, right? It's a careful calibration based on what we think people want to hear or what we should say or shouldn't say or what we think will go over well, what will make other people like us but that's really not using your voice to its fullest potential. You can do the next slide. So when we talk about your voice as your power, it's most powerful when it's honest. Not when you're saying what you think other people wanna hear, but when you get real and you speak from the core of who you are about what is really in your heart of hearts. So once you've kind of established this and answered some of the questions we're gonna to tackle today, then, um, this really makes a difference in how you show up anywhere at work, even in um, personal relationships. Um, go on to the next slide. I also really want to encourage you not to be afraid to be a weirdo, because sometimes the things that we have been taught to hide, our failures, our mistakes, our weaknesses, our obsessions, these are the things that actually really connect us with other human beings. If you think about the music or art or writing that really resonates with you the most, it's probably because it's expressing something real to you, something that matters, something that makes you feel less alone in the world. And that's what we're trying to get to. It's not about the pretty stuff, it's the real stuff. So for this next section, I'm asking you to strip away the restrictions that are holding you back and what you think is expected of you, what you think someone else wants you to be or like or think or do. I'm asking you to listen to yourself with care and openness and curiosity and compassion and figure out what's going on in there right now. Because the thing that's so great is you're, you go ahead, Haley, you can go okay, back to that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, <clicked>. no. 
Your imperfections are perfectly human. They are a part of your story. They are a part of what makes you who you are. And so they're a part of your voice too. So what we're gonna do next, you can go to the next slide, is called a self audit. And you don't need a partner for this one. We're gonna all just do this together right here. Um, I'm gonna show you an example first, um, things that are true about me, and afterward I'll lead you through how to create your own. So this is gonna be a lot of clicks, Haley. But uh, I'm a woman, obviously, I'm white, I'm straight, I'm an American, I'm a Scorpio, I'm an introvert, I'm tall, I'm curvy, I'm a misanthrope, I'm a mother to a daughter, and I'm married to a man. I'm a writer, I love to travel, I love to read, I love animals, I love to-do lists. I'm really angry about the rise of white supremacy in the United States, and I'm really scared about the fallout from climate change. I'm hopeful that we're not all living in a horror show, although the last several months have really tested that hope. I want to use my voice to make a difference in the world. Um, when I first wrote this talk, I wanted to move to Canada, but I've changed my mind and I want to move to Portugal. I want to speak more than one language. I want to be more patient and I want to write more poems. All right, so you can click to the next side because slide. I'm going to ask you some questions for the next few minutes and give you time to write down the answers. It doesn't have to be structured like mine was at all. You do it however it feels good to you. Um, and you can have more than one answer to a question. The point, again, is to reveal your values as they are related to your identity. And um, yeah, there are some ground rules. First of all, suspend self-judgment. There is no right or wrong answer. And we're not really aiming for some perfect result. This is an experiment. Don't overthink it. Just go with your gut, your first instinct. Okay? Okay. So hopefully you've got your um, writing utensil ready. And then we have, go to the first question, Haley. Sorry, one second, the chat popped up. There we go. All right, the first question is, what did you inherit? And this means what are some things about yourself that you did not get to choose? Where you were born, the gender you were assigned at birth, how tall or not tall you are, what did you inherit? Okay, and we're gonna move on to the next question. And again, all these questions are gonna be in the workbook as well. So if you feel like you're, you don't have enough time right now to really do this the way you want to, that's okay, you can do it, you get another chance. The second question is what did you choose? What parts of you are self-made? You decided these things for yourself. The next question is what did you become as a result of something that happened to you or something that you did to yourself? What did you become? Okay, the next question. What do you love? Person, place, thing, idea, feeling, what really makes your heart beat faster? What do you love? Okay, next question. What do you feel confident about? Okay, and then the next question. What do you want to be or do? What do you want to be or do? And the next question, what do you want to stop being or doing? What breaks your heart the most about this world? And then the next question is a follow-up. Where does that heartbreak intersect with what you love to do the most? And what I mean by that is what are your unique skills that could be used in service to mend that thing about the world that breaks your heart? How can you use who you are and what you love to do to make the world better? I realize that's a huge question. So just short answers here. You can come back to it. So you've just created this portrait of your values. And Haley, you can go to the next slide. But not everything in this portrait is of equal importance. There are gonna be certain things that just really stand out to you. For example, when I did mine, I said, I'm tall and curvy. But obviously, that's not something I'm super passionate about. I'm not doing a workshop about how being tall and curvy is great. 
So the things that you really value are outlined in neon in your head when you look at this. They're the things you care about deeply and the things that you also have experience in. So when you do use your voice to speak about them, you have credibility. So next I want you to, if you have a, a different color pen, great. Otherwise just use the same pen and look at what you just wrote and just scan it and circle those things that are jumping out at you. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to read through it and do that. So we've done a lot of groundwork, but we really need to talk about what is silencing you because let's just take a minute to acknowledge that this is really hard. We all have a self-preservation instinct to protect our soft, vulnerable parts, right? And sometimes when you're speaking up and sharing your truth and showing your real face, it can feel like you're just completely naked and alone out there. Go to the next slide. So usually when I um, do this in person, I ask people to just call out into the room, what, is, what frightens you about using your voice? And a lot of times people say the same things. They say failure, they're afraid of rejection or looking stupid. They're afraid that nobody wants to listen to them. Um, one woman said she's just uncomfortable taking up the space that it requires to speak up. Um, a lot of people are scared of public speaking. Um, most people don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. You might be afraid of what others will think or how they'll respond to what you say, or um, maybe no one will take you seriously. Um, some people are afraid that they actually don't have anything of value to say. And I remember one guy said one time, what if my mom finds out? That's really terrifying to me. So there are a lot, a lot of things to be afraid of. Um, go ahead to the next slide. So maybe you've let that fear silence you. Sometimes it seems like silence might be the better bargain. But our silence is never going to save us. There's a quote from Zora Neale Hurston that I love that says, if you are silent about your pain, they will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Which is why sometimes this little poem by Nayira Wahid is really the most true thing, that when I am afraid to speak is when I speak, that is when it's most important. Go ahead to the next slide. For me right now, there's no one in current culture um, in the US who represents speaking up in the face of fear more than this woman, Chanel Miller. And I don't know if her story has made it to you, but uh, several years ago, she was raped in the dark behind a dumpster at Stanford University in California. Um, and she was raped by a guy who was a standout athlete, a great swimmer named Brock Turner. And everyone um, just called this random woman that he had raped Emily Doe, right? Her identity was protected throughout the trial that ensued. Um, but her victim impact statement was published in 2016. And to this day, more than 11 million people have read her statement. And last fall, she stepped out from that safety of being Emily Doe and being anonymous and published a memoir called Know My Name and said, I'm Chanel Miller. I'm Emily Doe, this is my story. And I just wanna read you um, a few things that she wrote about her voice in her book. She said, Brock will always be the swimmer turned rapist. He was great and then he fell. Anything I do in the future will be by the victim who wrote a book. His talent precedes the tragedy. I was supposedly born in it. I did not come into existence when he harmed me. She found her voice, people say can go to the next slide. I had a voice. He stripped it, left me gr groping around blind for a bit, but I always had it. I just used it like I never had to use it before. I do not owe him my success, my becoming. He did not create me. Go to the next one. This ugliness was something I never asked for. It was dropped on me, and for a long time, I worried that it made me ugly too. It made me into a sad, unwelcome story that nobody wanted to hear. Go ahead. But when I wrote the ugly and painful parts into a statement, an incredible thing happened. The world did not plug up its ears. It opened itself to me. So I want you to think about Chanel and think about yourself when I tell you that your voice is yours. Your truth is valid, no matter what happens next. 
no matter how people react to it, no, no matter how your voice might falter, no matter how many tone police show up in the comment section, your story is yours to tell whenever you're ready to share it. Which brings us to the next question. How do you get permission? You've got a pretty good idea maybe at this point what your voice is all about, some things that are important to you that you could put out there into the world. You just need to get permission. Go ahead and to the next slide. And I want to remind you that you have more power than you know. And that means that you don't need to ask for permission to be who you are. The only person who has to give you permission to share your story is you. So that's what I'm encouraging you to do today, to give yourself permission to speak. And this is something you're gonna have to do over and over and over again, even multiple times a day or an hour. And you might ask yourself, well, that's great. How do I, how do, I do that? How do I go about giving myself permission? Um, the first time I ever did this workshop, I ended here. I just said, so, that's it, give yourself permission to speak, have a great day, the end. And a woman came up to me afterward and said, I don't know how to do that, how do I give myself permission? Um, and I was like, oh right, <laughs> that's kind of key. So it's a bit of a head game, honestly, it, it depends on you. Some, something you, um, it's something you have to keep reminding yourself to do when you feel like you're sitting things out, you're shutting yourself down, you're silencing yourself. Um, I have been giving this talk and workshop for over a year and every single time I go to read that poem in the beginning, I feel like an idiot and I have to remind myself that I gave myself permission to do this. But every single time there is this really loud voice in my head that's like, why are you reading poetry to a bunch of strangers? They didn't sign up for this workshop to listen to your poems. This is really stupid. You shouldn't do this. And then I have to be like, I have a reason for doing this. I decided this was important and I have permission to do this. So I, ha I still, I still have to do it. Um, but the good thing is that today you have identified some things that are important to you that you want to put out into the world. And the thing about when you look at your identity and you look at your values and you identify those few things is they start a fire in your belly. Maybe you already have it, or maybe it got a spark today. And once you're, you recognize that passion in yourself about something, you, you're not going to be able to ignore it. And that kind of gives you the courage and the power to move forward. So what we're going to do right now is work on setting some goals for yourself that will move you along this journey um, to giving yourself permission and to, um, to, to keep you thinking about some of the things that um, have been brought up to you today or some things that you discovered when you became a fruit or when you looked at your fears. And I, I know, I absolutely know this is a lot to take in in just 90 minutes and I'm talking really fast. And um, so I want you to just keep an eye out for that vo voice workbook that Inez is gonna make sure that you get because then you can take all the time that you need with it. Um, I know this is a crash course. You can retrace your steps and establish more long-term goals if you like. But right now, I want you to, to write down one thing that you want to do with your voice. So what is this thing? When you looked at your values and you circled things that are important, what is one of those things that is just um, really catching your eye today? And and kind of a second part to this as you're thinking about that is how do you want to share it so you don't have to be a public speaker you don't have to be a writer maybe you are a painter maybe you're a musician maybe you um create clothes it could be a million different ways of expression so think about um i want to i want to put this thing out in the world and i want to do it in this way Okay, and then the second part of this is think about who is your audience? Who do you want to hear you? Who is this? Who are you aiming for? And, it, and this could be one person. It doesn't have to be you on a stage. I mean, it, it absolutely could be, but 
it could also be like, I have a, a, this thing that I want to share and this is a person that I want to hear me. So who's your audience? So I love, I love this photo. I love the, um, the fruit seeds in their hands and the idea, like continuing this metaphor of fruit that every story that you share is like a seed and every idea that you're having right now is a seed and they're just gonna keep, keep growing. So I want you, we're gonna send you back to breakout rooms to the same groups that you were in before. Um, and I just want you to take a, a minute to share the answers to your two questions. Just be like, this is my idea that I have and this is how I wanna share it. And this is who I'm thinking about sharing it with. And then we'll come back together in like five or six minutes and wrap up. Okay, and if you have any questions before you get sent away, please holler them out. So we're gonna wrap up, um, but I just want to repeat this for a minute so that you can sit with it. Um, that your voice matters, not just for your own sake, although it certainly does just for you, but because someone out there needs to hear what you have to say. We all learn from listening to each other. We're not just storytellers, we're story learners, actually. You can go to the next slide. Um, I really love this quote from a, a writer here in the US. She said, hearing someone else's story is how we make sense of our own. And then the next slide. And telling our story is what alchemizes our pain into someone else's medicine. You can go to the next slide. So, over my career as a writer, I've truly come to believe that stories are the things that change the world. More than facts or force or even the most well-reasoned arguments, stories are the things that get under our skin and build a home inside our hearts. So if you are brave enough to use your voice, you can give someone else the courage to find their own voice. You can inspire someone or awaken someone or make them just uncomfortable enough that they begin to question their own fears and their own prejudices. And I absolutely understand the inner naysayer who says, who am I to do this? Why should it be me? But the truth is that I'm the only one who can do this particular thing, telling these particular stories. And there is a story inside of you that only you can tell. So that's what this is all about, encouraging you to get out there and set your story free. I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Um, and thank you to Haley. She um, saved my bacon with the keynote slide today. And she has done every single one of these workshops with me. And I literally couldn't do it without her. Um, um, if you want to follow me, this is my Instagram handle, um, Words by LaDonna. And you feel free to start a conversation or ask questions or whatever you want. And then um, we've got a couple minutes left. And so I want to invite people to ask questions. But first of all, um, we wanted to see, um, Haley, could you stop sharing? And then if everyone, if you're okay with turning on your camera and just hold up your fruit self. And we want, um, I think Inez and Haley and I are going to take a screenshot um, of everyone and their fruit. I know there's some really gorgeous fruits out there. I saw um, a nectarine earlier that was absolutely stunning. So, um, all right. I see a lot of fruits. I know there's more. We might have to do it twice because I don't think everyone fits on one page. I know. I so I'm, I'm dressed like banana, ne? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Okay. So, so pay, take, page one. Or, I'm, I'm coming to page two. We'll keep holding it up. <laughs> I see your nectarine there, Kate. I love it. Um, okay. Inez, did you get a screenshot to you? Oh. Okay. Good photo. It's the only kind of group photo we have these days. I know. <laughs> But maybe someday we could uh, do this all in person again, or another workshop in person. Hope so. All right, that's all I've got. If um, Inez, I don't know if you want to wrap up or if anyone um, wants to share anything, I'm fine with that too. Yeah, I think um, 
I will I'll wrap up. So if anybody does need to leave, um, they can without feeling like they missed anything. And if anyone wants to stay behind and share or ask any questions, um, yeah, that's okay too. Um, so yeah, a major thanks to LaDonna and Haley. This was such a nice workshop. Um, it, I, I mean, it opened my eyes so much and uh, gave me so much to think about and I really loved it. And especially um, such a huge thanks, Haley, especially for, you know, doing the admin and the running of the breakout rooms. Uh, usually the team and I have to do that. Um, so this has been like one of the first times when we've actually been able to participate as participants and I'm not like messaging people on the side and making sure that everything's going okay and so it was thank you so much it was uh thank you really so much nice for having to have us. that <laughs> thank you for hosting cool. and us. then yeah and and then a reminder to everyone on the call if you have not um sent your email to she can do uh, or myself before so you're new please do so so that we can share this recording with you the slides the resources and most importantly the workshop books which have been sent to us, they're in South Africa, they are stuck somewhere, you know, COVID things. So we are, I'm following up every day, but um, yeah, as soon as we, we find out when we can collect them, I will let everyone know how we're going to distribute them. Um, and yeah, I, I think just like a, a huge thank you. I, I thought I would also um, maybe share the one thing that was so interesting for me, um, LaDonna, with the the questions that you were asking us um the one question and and i i was quite i made sure that i didn't like think too much about things so i was just writing and writing and when you got to the question about what are you confident about i could only put one thing down and that was um sort of work skill related stuff and i really struggled to sort of pull in stuff there and so when we did the reflection and, and you know, what do you want to do? What do you want your voice to do? What stood out to me actually was this blank space um, and thinking that I, I should be more confident in things. Um, the, the, well, there should be more that I'm confident in than, than just my work. So my main thing that I'd like to do is to find out more about myself by exploring more topics such as this and doing this workshop again by myself in a bit more detail and then using that to voice that to myself actually so um yeah so really really thank you to to both of you uh, i love that anyone, those, thank you for sharing that's yeah. that's so great cool yeah. so if um, anyone needs to leave feel free to if anyone has any questions or wants to share um some reflections um maybe you know, just go for it. Anyone? So, mm. so, uh, sorry, I'm gonna, it's Charlene, it's Charlene here, and I just want to ask LaDonna, like, obviously, you've been doing this for years. Do you still have that voice of self-doubt that creeps in to not speak up or because I'm terrified of public speaking or even just speaking in groups or boardrooms or even right now. It's just, yeah. Does that voice ever leave you? Um, no, it doesn't. But it gets quieter. Um, and I, I will tell you the first time I ever, um, I ever spoke about this, it was... Um, it was a, at a conference. It was at the OFF um, festival in Tel Aviv, actually. And I, I actually, oddly, I'm a super introvert in real life, but I like public speaking. I don't know why. But, um, but I was nervous because I had never been to Israel before, and I wasn't sure um, how this message was going to be received. And it was a very um, mixed audience, like a lot of, a lot of guys in there, and a lot of kind of like tech guys. Um, and I have a section in the talk and it's, some of it is in the workbook too, that's pretty feminist, um, 
you know, pounding home this idea that, you know, women really feel this, that it, we are in all the ways um, instructed in the silence since we're, we're young girls. And um, a couple of guys with really big, shiny backpacks got up and left. Actually, it was more than a couple. It was like five to 10 guys. And it was this um, stadium seating. So I see them really clearly. And that voice just started screaming in my head and was like, what are you doing here? Like, why are you, why are you here? Why are you speaking? They think you're stupid. They're leaving. They're mad at you. They don't like you, you know? And I have no idea why they left. Maybe they had to go to the bathroom, but that's what my brain was telling me. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not here for them. I'm not here for them. I'm here for someone else who is staying and who is listening. And so that I, I recall that whenever I get that, when the voice gets shouty in my head, I just remember that and like there's there's someone who needed to hear this here today so even though um you know i felt stupid reading my poem or whatever like so, so, there was a reason for it and so um again you don't have to be a public speaker and your your thing might show up differently but there there will be times when it um it comes really easily um and there will be times when you have to um, adjust the volume on that voice in your head. But I think that reminding yourself that this is yours and you are the one who gives yourself permission really changes things for me. That I'm not looking around. I don't. I didn't need permission from those guys to keep speaking. I had. I needed to give myself permission. Um, and so it's like anything else. The more you do it the more you say it the more real it becomes and the more it becomes a habit excellent thank you for that yeah um i have a question slash comment yeah uh slash i don't really know how to word it but I work in like a big corporate and I tend to get in trouble for like challenging authority or asking too many questions I I always ask too many questions because that's what I was I was raised by two journalists and that was like mm -hmm. so I kind of but I've kind of learned like, well, I've tried to learn what is more like appropriate to say in a, a kind of corporate context, but I struggle still to kind of find the line between, I mean, cause I, I feel like there's still a time and a place in a way, like right. I can have my voice, but there's probably parts of my voice that don't need to be in like a, boardroom or whatever <laughs> you know but so it's, I don't know if it's a question but just kind of a for me it's like a constant struggle to find where mm. like you know when to stop <laughs> yeah when to be quiet yeah um yeah it is it is complex and um I think that when when you feel that need to speak rising up in you and it's um like you you know a lot of times when like this this thing is really important um, and i i have to say something um and so sometimes i just i ask myself the question what's what's going to be worse here um silencing myself or speaking up what's the what's that's how I sometimes make a decision. I don't know if that um, if that helps at all, but I think um, I think a lot of times about the like is the fear and the um, suppression worse or is the silence worse? And I read um, an article posted on Medium by an, an American writer named Ijeoma Oluo. She's from Seattle, and she has written a book called um, So You Want to Talk About Race, addressing all the, the white supremacy, racism, and 
the United States that I'm sure you all know is just a complete an awful shit show um, and has been really forever, <laughs> but um, especially um, lately. And she talked about all the years she spent as a black woman in a pretty white city in Seattle um, and all the incidents that happened to her and how she would just take it, you know, because what else could she do? And she didn't really talk about it. And most of her friends at the time were white as well. And then, um, she just hit a point where she was like, I can't, I can't, like the silence was suffocating her. And she had a food blog at the time. And she started writing about her personal experiences as a black woman in a white world on her food blog. And of course, some people got really pissed and they're like, I came here to hear about pie and you're talking about really sad things and I don't like it. And she lost friends. And the more um, vocal she became, and especially when she published her book, there were death threats against her and people, you know, sent cops to her house and all kinds of just awful stuff. And so she wrote this article after some friends and family members were like, why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep speaking out? You're just asking for it, really. And she said, my experience is the same whether I speak up or not. And it, it is better for me to be able to speak up and to use my voice. Um, to try to do something about it. So I, I don't know, there's a lot of the lot in there, but I think about that a lot of times and just like, um, if it's going to happen anyway, is it better to take it in silence or to say something, use your voice in, in some way to make it better? Yeah, I, th I think that I try to kind of weigh up the consequences in a way like but then sometimes I like don't assess those very well or like I think that they might be worse than they actually land up being or like I feel really strongly about something that I think is unethical um but like could this damage a relationship with an important person or like am I going to see like repercussions from my manager but like what is it actually worse that something might impact like a product or something that I, uh, or my own research process that is not um, ethical, but so it's also just a kind of uh, learning about being confident, I guess, about what the consequences are like, because sometimes they're not as bad as I think they might be. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Kate. It's uh, I definitely don't have all the answers there, and it's it's really, and especially in those boardrooms with a lot of older men, it's intimidating. Oh, so I, I, yeah, I saw that someone had asked about a reading list, and I, I yes. um, yes, there is a reading list. I gave it to Inez. Yes. Yep, we'll be sharing it. So as long as I've got your email, you will definitely get that. Um, okay, I, I, I don't want us to take up too much of LaDonna's time. So time for one more last comment, question, going once, twice. I have a question. Hi. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Nom Funda here. Uh, uh, thank you for the session, LaDonna. Um, Going back to what Kate um, also raised around um, corporate, because sometimes, so I can relate with Kate and sometimes people think I'm too passionate about um, a certain thing and they, they confuse my passion to um, something else, whether it's like you too angry or mm -hmm. you too mm -hmm. vocal about it. So how do I then switch the narrative and still push my passion, but in a more appropriate corporate voice. <laughs> yeah, that's the trick, right? I, um, yes. So I found in my 20s that I was, I, I mean, that has happened to me a lot as well. But in my 20s, I was coming in with like all guns blazing, but it was mostly based on 
how I felt about something. And I, I learned, I've learned over the years of um, working in corporate situations that um, if I back my feelings up with facts or um, logical arguments or, you know, like n not diluting your passion at all, but being like, and I have reasons and I have proof or I have, you know, here's this business case and that's why I'm so fired up about this, that um, it kind of people, it, takes them by surprise a little bit because they especially when they misjudge your passion is just like oh you're so angry you know and then you're like actually here's reasons um that 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 tends to make a difference um i also for me and this is probably not the case for you but a lot of times the stuff that i was getting fired up about when i was younger was not the stuff that was wor <laughs> worth it you know, um, so I also have learned to pick my battles as well um, and a bit of what Kate was saying, you know, like is how important is this not just to me, but to my company or to my team or to this product or whatever. Um, and knowing those risks and then kind of building building your case um, and and then you know, there's also the element of like, there's gonna, you can't control how people are gonna respond to you. But if you have your stuff locked down, um, then you can feel really good about that. And that you said what you needed to say, you said it the way you wanted to say it, and you had your case backing you up. And then mm -hmm. if they're still gonna be jerks about it, then you can't fix them, you know? All right. I don't, Cool. Yeah, I, it's so, this is so, especially for women in the workplace, in the corporate world, this, this is so real and it's so tough and I absolutely don't have the answers for all of it other than just like, it, it absolutely feels worse to just sit silently in that room and bite your tongue. So um, if you can speak in the best way that you can and that doesn't mean like to policing your tone to make men comfortable I'm not here to make men comfortable but to to make yourself heard what do you need to do to make yourself heard um I think that that's the key for me anyway all right thank you yeah Okay. Hi. Sorry, right, I just chart. want to say um, hi. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much. This has been an incredible workshop, like really insightful. And I just want to say that that last thing you said, I just absolutely love. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not here to make men comfortable. I'm here to be heard. And um, yeah, I don't know if you saw the conversation Kate and I were having in the chat. I've been yeah. told by a client before that um, I, I need to be more agreeable because uh, they kept making unreasonable requests and then blaming the team when things couldn't be done on time, like mm -hmm. adding extra things in, et cetera, et cetera. And I got very, very upset when they kept trying to throw my team under the bus. And that's the whole thing of, um, I went in guns blazing very much like, you can't do this, we're not doing this, you will not you know, do this to my team, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, older male was very upset that the young woman yeah. was standing up to him and went to my yeah. male superiors to complain about me. And so I, I just love that sentiment. Like I'm not here to make men comfortable and I think yeah. I'm going to make that my motto from now on. Um, <laughs> I love not, it. Not that I would ever, you know, it's not that you want to antagonize someone. It's just, right. I'm not going to turn myself down to make you comfortable. Thank well, you. I'm, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think, I mean, the reason that we all are in this boat is because the men in power have been comfortable for so long, you know, and things don't change until we light it up a bit. So, um, however that works for you. Um, yeah, it, I, I never think that, um, that if there's something you need to say, um, and something that needs to be said, um, 
sometimes you have to hurt a few feelings. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. That was um, that was great, and uh, I'm seeing your um, conversation in the chat now too. So. Okay, I also just want to say it's been so lovely for Haley and I to be here with you. We are so excited about today. Um, and yeah, so thank you all for taking the time to, to do thank this you. with us tonight. Um, I think that for me that um, the way that I've been able to have the confidence to use my voice is just by having a group of women in my workplace or in my community that I feel supported by. So that's my advice for everyone is to continue to build your community, whether it's through She Can Do or other allies that you have in the workplace, friend circles, other professional circles. Um, and happy Women's Month for everyone. Yes, yes, happy Women's Month for sure. Thank you so much for having us. Right. Oh, nice. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, we perfect. can close. Thank you so much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And to all the South Africans, I hope you have a fantastic evening. Yeah. Have a good night. And uh, we'll yeah. send all of the follow-ups soon.